All right, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to Wit Finish Wednesday. And as everyone's logging on, big thanks to Big T for hopping on Thursday morning. So he likes to get on here and uh, have his morning coffee and tie a few bugs. Um, but Katie and I are really excited to have everyone join us this evening. We've got a busy, busy night. We've got a few techniques we want to go over as well as um, we've got some giveaways to do, which is always fun. And um, we're going to uh, to announce the next giveaway as well. Um, the yeah, and we'll also tie some flies. So if you are not watching live and you'd like to fast forward, feel free to fast forward through us chatting for a little bit as we wait on everyone to uh, to hop on. And um, <clears throat> Katie, if you will double check this and make sure that I'm seeing the comments over here, that would be great. And um, with that said, thank you so much for uh, for joining us, everyone. So, what are we going to tie tonight? Real quick um, uh, preview of the show. We're going to uh, be tying some Quill Gordons. And the reason we'll be tying these, and the reason I jumped into these so quick, is uh, I got a note from uh, one of my buddies uh, that, that said that <clears throat> we are, what's up, Patrick and Ken? Good day, Ken, over in Australia. Um, that said that the Quill Gordons are already hatching here locally. So for us, we don't have a very big uh, Quill to Gordon season, if you want to call it that. And once they do start hatching, uh, the days are numbered. So hello, Christine and Jimmy. Um, so unfortunately, uh, time's ticking, and uh, we've got this weekend to uh, – what's up, Steve? And Steve was talking about going and looking for him this weekend as well. Um, what's up, Mr. Blazer? Good to see you hopping on. I bet you'll be hopefully looking for some Quill Gordons this weekend too. Um, but <clears throat> we've got this weekend to try to fish for them, and the weather's not looking too good. But it was 80 around here today, so I can't believe it was that warm. What's up, John? So without further ado, um, let's go ahead and do a quick giveaway. Um, this is for us hitting 500 uh, subscribers on the Instagram. What's up, Mark? Chasing Feathers and Mr. Brashears and Collins, John Collins. Um, and guys, thank you so much for hopping on. Thank you for uh, for commenting and uh, and really getting in the conversation. If you see someone, for those of y'all that are on every week, if you see someone you uh, don't recognize, say, what's up? How are you doing? Uh, the more people chatting, the more fun this is. Did I say, yes, I did say that. And thank you, who, Jim, Freddie. Let's go live on Instagram. Now we got it. Hello, Helena. Thank you for, uh, um, I think that might have been one of Helena's first flies that she posted today that we just shared on uh, Instagram. So thanks for joining in. So Katie, you want to go ahead and do this quick giveaway? Sure, I can do that. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching tonight. We're going to do a quick drawing to see who our winner is this week for the Jig Caddis Euro Caddis that we tied last week. And the winner this week is going to get the Umqua LT Standard Foam Premium Fly Box right here. So get excited about that. Let's see who our winner is. So this is this going is to be a sophisticated drawing system right here. This is from the past few weeks. And uh, this also includes top flies from the past couple weeks worth of tying. So you got some mm -hmm. flies in there as well. What's up, Timothy? Our winner this week is Christine Gonzalez. Way to go, Christine. You are the winner of this amazing fly box. Congratulations to you. And while we're talking about it, let's show some pictures. Is that okay, honey? Yeah, let's show some pictures of, some, of what was submitted this week. Okay, so here we go. Um... The first one we've got is Patrick W. Smith. Looking pretty good here. Stonefly one. Great picks, guys. On Bishop. Look at all these Euro jig caddises. Todd Recamp. Or Todd K. Recamp. Or Todrick Amp. Good looking fly right there. Christine's our winner this week in the drawing. Jimmy Root. UV light on it. Just like Christine's have UV light as well. Uh, Jared 
blazer. And this is, he had two of them. And I put them both up here because I thought that, that, that that was a cool pick. And here is Jared's other one. That's blazing the outdoors. He's, he's on here. I think I saw him say hello. And our up and coming female fly tire, Helena. And that's all I've got for this, uh, what you guys tied. If I miss somebody's, I apologize. I'm, always, I'm not always that great at finding everybody's flies on there, but hopefully I got most of them. So way to go, guys. That was a lot of fun time. It was last week. And thanks for sharing your picks for this week. Awesome. Thank you, Katie. And everyone on Instagram, sorry, you've been hopping on, hopping off because I've been uh, ignoring you. Come over on YouTube and check out the, the show on there. You'll be able to see a lot better here, a lot better, hopefully, and we'll be able to communicate with you a little bit better as well. So, <clears throat> guys, um, and what's up, Matt? Matt Zillox. Nice. Um, all right. So what we're what we're tying is the uh, well. Let's go over the giveaway ne for for next time. So once we hit 500 followers, we're going to do the same thing we've done before. We've got this Umqua HC standard foam fly box here. Uh, this is a double sided fly box, but we're going to put the flies that we tie tonight live. Uh, and the next couple, two, three weeks, how long it takes us to get 600 followers to get this fly box. But in addition, we're going to uh, give away, which picture do you have next? I mean, or does it matter? You just. Okay. okay. In, in addition, we've been working with Smitty Box, and we're going to um, start tying some of their, um, their flies out of their, their box here live. Um, so <clears throat> they sent us. Um, this Hungarian partridge skin, this one right here. Um, and the, Katie's got a, yep, Katie's, that's, that's the skin. So we're going to give that Hungarian partridge away. And it's back in the bag. Gary Barnes, who is on here right now, he is, uh, get, he is throwing up a $25 gift card to gbflies.com to his, uh, his web store. So big thanks. So that is awesome. East Angler's Coffee. <clears throat> so Angler's Coffee is uh, going to be giving away a cup and two bags of coffee. So lots of stuff, and we'll break it up into uh, two or three different winners to, to get this prize package. But um, but a good uh, good little little package, much more than just a fly box, much more than just a fly box of flies. What about the stickers? The yeah, well, that's that's part of the, that's. I don't know if they have stickers or not, but definitely coffee and definitely the cup. Okay, we'll they, we'll give them a sticker. Yeah, we'll figure something out. And is but, there um, anything else? That I think gonna... I think that was it. I believe fly box, gift card, the skin, the partridge skin, and uh, Angler's coffee. Okay, and, did you want to talk about what Smitty's is really quick in case people didn't know? Sure. Let's go quick. We went over it last week, and what we're going to do one of these weeks is <clears throat> I've got two two of their their monthly boxes here, um, and this is the one that that I've got in my hand, one that Katie just showed a picture of. Um, and when you get it, the cost is twenty five bucks, and that includes shipping. And you get this nice little. Uh, uh, yep, blue quills are coming off right now. You're absolutely right, Steve. Usually they're first, and then the quill gordons are come behind. But it's almost like the quill gordons and blue quills came off at the same time. Um, but uh, <clears throat> but anyway, you get this nice little newsletter with the step by step instructions on how to tie said fly, which is good. Hi, John and, Christopher. Well, hello, John Christopher. Geo, good gamer. John Christopher is in the house. What's up, buddy? John Christopher and I were at baseball practice this evening, so he's been swinging hard and doing really good. So thanks for hopping on, buddy. But if you uh, guys haven't uh, taken a look at the Smitty's Fly Box Fly of the Month um, thing set yet, check it out. It's pretty cool. Um, be kind of a cool gift, maybe for somebody starting out in fly time or somebody who's kind of looking for something different to give someone. So I thought that was pretty neat. It's definitely, definitely cool. But um, so in the, in the box, you've got all the dubbing you need for this particular fly. You've got a patch of um, uh, calf body hair. You've got 
crystal flash hooks, widening form tackle, and some elk hair. So, and thread. So you've got everything you need to tie um, probably at least a dozen flies. And um, we, whenever we have got a week that we don't have a lot to tie and a lot to go over, I've got one more right here that I haven't opened. I'm, I don't, uh, he put a note and said what it is, but a duck butt. Ooh, so an we've got an unopened one. So we'll break this open and tie it. But uh, what we'll do is as they're shipped out, we'll pick a week during the month and we'll tie it up. So um, that'll be kind of, kind of fun to do. So anyway, what else are we missing? Honey? Katie's really good about keeping um, me on track. I mean, just talk about what we're going to tie for this week and whether or not they're going to be there this week with the weird weather. And I'll show some pictures of some real ones that we've gotten from two of our fly fishing. Yes. So the, the reason that we, um, that I've got these pictures, one is from Seth Cavaretta. Yes. Seth Cavaretta. Um, you all probably know him or seen his work on Instagram. Very Seth Kevin. This honey, it's not Kevin. It's Cavaretta. 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 Anyways, so he's from. He, sorry, sorry, Seth. Um, so he's from up north. He told me the uh, the fly itself that, uh, or the the actual river itself it came from. The point is from northeast. So this is his um, uh, his natural, his local quill gordon. And the thing to pay attention to are these long split tails. Uh, but you can see how the bottom of it's lighter than the top, and you see it's this, the wings are dark. It is very big. Um, we'll be tying these in a size 12. Um, and let's flip over to the next picture. You got it. So this one, Jesse Huddleston, um, this is uh, the same Quill Gordon. You see those long, wispy tails, the two of them that are longer than the uh, the dark wings. We see how the body is a lot darker. Um, so down here in Tennessee, our uh, quill gardens are quite a bit darker um, <clears throat> than uh, than up north. Uh, same species or same same fly, same bug itself, but um, just a slightly different color variation. Now, really, is it gonna make that much difference? Probably not. To how you're tying it, um, but just something to keep in mind when you are trying to imitate a specific fly. Um, and yes, jo John Christer, that is, those are the real actual flies. And big thank you to um, Seth, Seth and, Jesse. and Jesse for uh, for letting us use their pictures because that uh, that's pretty pretty good. There's Jesse right there, and yes, Jesse, those those tails do dance very oh, much. Jesse. So, um, Jesse, so did you see the the other one for comparison? I don't know if you were here. Yeah, this is this is Seth's from uh, from the Northeast. And um, <clears throat> so that's that's the actual bug we're going to imitate tonight. I'm good to go to bed. Okay, have have a great night, John Christopher. Thank you so much. Everyone say bye to John Christopher or just JC for short. He did some um, work. He's got good, good, good. Good night, John Christopher. See you soon. <laughs> All right. So uh, everyone on Instagram, sorry, come over to YouTube and check us out so I can see your comments and you can see us goofing off a little bit more. Um, so let's get to time. We'll, let's show you the fly that I've got my vice. This is one that I just now did. Um, I just tied it up. And because Big T uh, kind of called us out on doing a synthetic quill body, that's exactly what we did. We did a synthetic quill body on this one. Um, you've got those, you can't see the end of the tails. We got these split tails. Uh, you've got the, <clears throat> the darker hackle, uh, as well as the, uh, this is actually a, a blue done, uh, parachute post is the separate fly poly yarn post. Uh, and this one actually just has a, a mixed colors of separate fly K-Pog dubbing. So this one actually, other than the hackle is, hackle and tails is hundred percent separate fly products. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Swinging away to bat every day. Yep, Steve. That's awesome. cool. <laughs> Steve. That that pro is probably some good advice for sure. Um, so here's um, here's another one that we. This might be one of the ones we posted, but we'll stick it up here. This one should have a. Yeah, that that's got the actual strip peacock quill. This is a blend of muskrat and beaver dubbing for the thorax. Um, you've got a little wood duck parachute post and single wood duck 
tails. I remember the the picture that Jesse posted or that Je we shared that Jesse had. These tails are going to be nice, long, and wispy, and and look really good. And what we're going to show is when you're tying the fly itself to keep the um, how how you're going to keep the tails split when they get wet because it's easy to like pull them apart and make them look cool for a picture. But once they get wet, we don't want them going into one. Um, so this one's going to work a little bit, a little bit better. <clears throat> um, and let's see if we can find another one. Or I can definitely find another one. See if we can actually get another one. Um, so this this body is kind of interesting. Um, so you've seen a lot of people use uh, goose biots for a body <clears throat> and turkey biots for the body. But the goose is usually pretty good for... Um, wrapping backwards and not having the, the edge pop out. Um, so you get a nice smooth, almost quill like body with the goose, but they're not, they're not long enough, or at least the ones I've got are not long enough to wrap backwards to have a smooth body with the, um, the segmentation showing. So this is a turkey biot, but the problem with turkey biot is they're a little bit too wide. So I trimmed it down. Uh, lengthwise and wrap the turkey biot to give this nice, real nice segmentation here. This is that same muskrat and beaver uh, dubbed thorax, mixed up dubbing um, the poly yarn. And this one has multiple tails on the side that are split. So as you can see, when I when I pinch them, they 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 pop back apart. So that's that's what we want. And the reason this is one of Seth's ideas was the um, <clears throat> the tails, but using multiple multiple on each side because these the wood duck fibers are um is a big fly i think you can turkey yeah well that's that's the thing but, but the turkey is this is that's exactly what this is is turkey um and john i'm using the the magpie wild turkey biots for this one this is from moonlit fly fishing um and as a side note if you want to order these you can get on moonlit site and order all you want and use Check out code WF Wednesday for whip finish Wednesday. W it's WF Wednesday. And you get 10% off um, these wild turkey biots. They're pretty awesome. So and everything else. And use CD. Whatever. Yes, absolutely, Joe. Use and this is we're going to use a few different materials for our tails. Um, you can use I won't say anything you want, but CDL work fine. We're talking about fish and flies. We're not talking about trying to copy a pattern, make it make anything like actual original ready to make it absolutely perfect. We're just trying to make it durable, look good, fish even better. Good grief. Maybe start off by sticking the hook in the vise somewhat straight. There we go. I missed it. Did you answer if, the, if you can use cook the wheel on your tail? Yep. I said, yep, you can use CDL for the tail. Um, and the first one is just to keep it, uh, well, the first one will do some wood duck, um, but we're going to also use, um, because they're durable, just some micro fabets, really durable, really easy to use. These are really easy to, to show how to do the split tails. But this first one, we're going to do a uh, strip peacock quill. We're actually going to strip, we're actually going to strip it. And wood duck is fragile for sure. Only the short sides. Oh, well, I was talking about wrapping. Um, yeah, I know what you're talking about, John. Um, to get the rib to cover up the rib with with the second wrap. So as you're wrapping over, when you when you wrap, you got that rib that sticks up, and then your next wrap covers it up. Next wrap covers it up. Um, so I'm using just just the primary, the leading edge. Uh, but I love using the long edge that you're talking about. That works really good if you're wanting that rib. I haven't found a way to get the rib to cover up that way. Joel, this is a size 12 A-Rex Freshwater 500. Um, and I think it was Steve Yates that said uh, a lot of times with these, he'll do a um, dropper of a um, uh, Quill Gordon soft tackle emerging coming up through the surface and uh that's the main reason i'm using the 500 a barbed hook versus a barbel hook because if i'm if i'm going to tie it off on the bend which sometimes i will um having that barb on there helps to keep the tip from sliding off if i've got barbless or had already crushed the barb then i'll just tie the the dry and have a tag dry, tie it on a tag and have the dropper go down so 
Yeah, bucktail. Use guys when that that's what's fun about you guys. That's what's exciting about this little show is use what you've got. If you've got um, CDL, use it. If you've got some good spade hackle, use it. If you have um, these microfabets, use them. That's why we're going to use different materials for the body itself because um, <clears throat> it just depends on what you've got. And most of us have got turkey biots laying around. Um, and um, yeah, and, and, and whoever said, I think it was Steve said it, is absolutely right. The big draw, wood duck looks great for the tails. The big drawback to it is it is fragile. So it won't last through a whole bunch of fish. But man, it looks good, especially when it's wet. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to use on this particular one, because this is one that we're going to um, tie with the peacock quill, the natural one. We'll use the Semper Fly 12 lot Classic Wax Thread, and Primrose. So I'm just going to get started on the hook. And where I'm, if you'll notice on the hook itself, Katie, we'll switch there. Are we, there we go. If you notice on the hook itself where it is, first of all, I can't notice where it is because I can't see it. That's pretty bad when I've got glasses on tie size 12. It's pretty big for that, but. Please, I don't want to hear it. Um, so if you notice where, I'm, where I've started the, the thread, that is pretty much right where I want the pair, the post to come up because I'm going to put a, I'm going to show you a little thing on these. We're going to do a post two different ways. So just pop this off, bring our thread back up to here. Everybody's talking about the different things they can use. And yep. it reminded me on Alone Today, the guy that dyed his hair green. Oh my gosh, yeah. And cut his own hair. I don't know if anybody out there has watched the latest season of Alone, but the, it's in Labrador, so these the, they're fly fishing. And he he dyed his hey, wait on driftless. hair green, like bright green, so that when he got there, he could cut it off and make a streamer with it. Crazy. So we're going to get to time. Everyone on Instagram, come over and hop and watch us on YouTube. You'll see better and hear better. So um, we'll leave it right there. So I've got a wood duck feather here, and you can see this is kind of the ones with the bars right here. So I've got some barring to about here. So I'm going to grab that and see if I don't break the feather off. Strip that down because for the most part, this is going to be a junk feather. Um and I've got another one that wasn't really fully developed here. So really, I just want to show this technique. This one right here would be perfect for a parachute post. You can see that's, a, that's about the right thickness, right, everything. But normally, I grab two feathers I can't use for wings that are just too small or too off-centered off or something is not right with the, um, with the feather itself. So I'll grab two. I'll set them up next to each other. And I'll hold them up like this so you can, so I can see, not necessarily so you can see. And I'll make sure those tips are lined up. Bring them down. And that looks pretty good. So we've got a nice little, little parachute. So let's get back to the hook. I'm going to spin up my thread so it's corded up so it'll be a little stronger. I'm going to make this to where it's roughly the length of the shank itself. So you can see, you can kind of picture where the, um, the shank bends down where the fingers are. I'm going to take that measurement, bring it to right here. Put a couple wraps on there, make sure that my everything's straight. I'm going to pull up and, and look, make sure I've got enough room to make my thorax, and that looks good to me. So I'll bring this back up, and I'm making pretty darn tight wraps right here. And I'll need to find my scissors. Go like that and cut it off. So now I'm going to bring this back down. Just make a little rant. Oh, this is like, I don't say the more complicated. I'll just say this is the little bit more fancy parachute, <coughs> parachute post. And you can break your thread like that because you're pulling really hard. And it's not a big deal. Hey, guys, it would not be a true live show if I didn't break my thread at least once. Right? No. Someone's got to say something like, whoops. Whoops. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Always count on my... Trying to chime in there. 
Oh, you didn't try to chime in. You did chime in. Thank you. There's that. Pull this one off. Oh. There we go. So pull tight, but not quite that tight. I'm going to pull this up. Now I want to go ahead and build, build a little thread dam here. I want to say a little thread dam. I want it to be pretty substantial as far as when I'm done. The reason I say that is if I leave it here, you see how the, the post is going kind of up, but it's kind of forward. When I post this, this wing up, I, I'm going to have to kind of bend it back over to make it right. Now my, now my post is going to be crooked. Uh, I'm on the same line twice. Yeah, were you live, Chris? I wouldn't be surprised if you were live. What's up, Michael? Michael Falkenberry, Falkenberry. Mr. Two Dry Fly. So I'm I'm really going to jam, bring my thread back to underneath that wing and back up. So I'm not really trying to build like a huge dam. I'm just trying to bring my thread all the way as tight as I can against that um, that wing. So I think I'm done. Now you can see how it's going a lot more straight up. Now let's pull this up. With the vets had a crowd. Yep, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't, it, it never fails. Something about being tied in front of people and breaking thread just kind of goes hand in hand. It makes you feel like you really know what you're doing too. So now we're going to post this up. And what I want to do is I want to pay attention to make sure my wraps are not um, overlapping, that they are going just right beside each other. And you don't want to see that, that one little gap down there. That's why we're moving around just a bit. So I'm going to fill that gap in on my way down. Um, I'm keeping constant pressure the same pressure on the thread I'll put an extra wrap there to fill it in put an extra or the same pressure on the thread as i go as i go up and down because i don't want there to be divots or anything in my my post all right so now let's go to the tails like i said this will be our fancy version and then we'll start banging them out matt i'm not using nano silk tonight <clears throat> nano silk is one of those those products that i Gosh, for those of y'all that have been watching for a long time, I'd say for about a year, I use white nano silk or black nano silk. And it's like, I don't want to say it's like cheating because the classic wax has its place. I like how it's sticky or it grips the materials a little bit more. I really like uh, the classic wax thread. Um, but the nano silk, once you get used to it, it's just, you just find yourself, that's all, that's all I would use is nano silk. I've got a bulk spool of black and a bulk spool of white. And that's, you know, you're pretty good on, on what you need. Okay, so let's we'll put it back to the the picture itself. So you can see this wood duck feather. It's not one I can use. Obviously, this this side here, but this one is just kind of one that I'm not one to, to use. And thanks a lot to Ryan Morgan. I believe these came from him uh, about a year ago. I put a note out and asked for anyone who had extra wood duck feathers, and I got some from John Collins, Mr. Collins. Thank you so much for sending me some wood duck. I got some from my. Uh, Ryan Morgan and Truman sent us some wood duck. So thanks a lot, guys. I'm um, always looking for wood duck. That's why we don't tie with it too much because those beautiful feathers that make great wings are hard to come by. You could tow a trailer. Yep, totally. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the feather. I'm going to strip off. Uh, let's see how many we've got there. One, two, three. Is that six? One, two, three. yep, we'll say that's six. So I'm going to show off six fibers. I want to make sure the tips are lined up. See how my tips are pretty much lined up? So I pull the feather away. When you're doing that, and I'm sorry you didn't see the actual process. When you're pulling the feather away, if you're trying to keep everything pretty aligned, pull the feather away from the, the stem, away from your fibers, versus the fibers away from your stem. So switch over to the tying desk, honey. So... Um, what I mean by that is when you're, you're getting you got your, your your fibers in this hand here, pull this way, not this way. And this is one of those minor, minor details. It doesn't matter. Pull whichever way you want to. But I found when I pull the feather away from my fibers that I'm 
move the fibers around less than the other way around, but not too big a deal. <clears throat> All right, so let's go back to the to this part. So we're, we're going to tie this in. And what I want to do is I want to measure it. Remember I said they're long tails. So we've got a full hook shank and probably a hook shank and a gap. So maybe one in the, sorry, a full hook length, not hook shank, the full hook length, and then about a gap or so. So I'm going to do a little pinch wrap. I'm holding the hook and the fibers right in my hand. I'm going to bring my thread up, pinch it so you can see it's loose. I'm going to bring it down and bring it back down to the left away from, or pull it towards me. So now I've got these tied, tied in. Now I want to look and make sure that those are tied right on the top of the hook shank. Now, as you can see, my thread, you should barely be able to see that. I put my thread right on top of my previous wrap. I don't want that. So I'm going to take my thread. I'm going to pull it back. And see, I just popped down. A little bump was it popping down. Um, Steve, if if you've been pulling it off the other way for 20 years, it's not going to make a huge difference. But you know, see, oh gosh, Gary, what did I do? What am I forgetting? Um, <clears throat> I'm sure I forgot something. So we've got we'll the we've got that clump of tails tied in. Now remember, I, I did a clump because I want to put multiple. I'm trying to do two tails, but, I, but because it's wood duck and it's fragile, I'm doing multiple fibers on each tail. Oh, by the way, guys on on Instagram, uh, there might be just one. There's one of you, Anirondack Fly Company. Uh, hop over on YouTube and check us out over there. You'll be able to see a lot better and hear a lot better. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm going to grab my tails. I've been keeping pressure on this because I didn't want it to slide at all. And you can see, I'll, I'll move it like this so you can see the top because I'm about to mess it all up. Grab the tail, pull it up. I put my thread in between the tail and the hook shank. I went underneath the tails right here, okay? I want to bring it back up so you can see what happens here. And see how it's kind of propping it up, kind of spreading them out a little bit. So I just put, I've got one wrap holding the tails in one wrap in between the shank and the tail. So underneath the tails, right where my fingernail is. Okay. We good so far? If you have to go bottom, is, is all I see. Is this the new one? Oh, yeah, this is the new one. I guess I shouldn't have broken my thread with the new one, should I? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll do. Oh, gosh, the Tyler. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. That one errant fiber. <laughs> um. Yeah, let me let me finish this tail thing, and we'll go over the uh, the bobbins again. Um, so if we switch back over to the uh, the hook, please. So what you just missed is me just doing one wrap like this. So I'm just trying to get my fibers kind of along my feathers, shoot my thread, get a nice little wrap. So all I'm doing now is just splitting these into two clumps. And if you've got a an extra fiber, just pull it out. Don't make it too confusing. So speaking of bobbins, this is where being able to have really good thread control is key. And I'll say again, having good thread control is what makes this easy. If you cannot have good thread control, practice. And that just comes from wrapping nothing but thread on the hook, thread on the hook, and having your thread go exactly where you want it, wrapping thread on the hook with loose thread, tight thread, everything. So as you can see, I've been keeping this tight the whole time. I'm going to shorten it up a little bit so I don't have much space in between the tip of my bobbin nozzle, the tip of my bobbin, and the hook. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the, turn this so you can see, bring the nozzle kind of loose enough on my thread. I'm going to bring it around, and I, br I brought that thread right in between the two. You see how I did that? So right now I've got just a little, just enough pressure to hold the, the thread tight. And I'm going to bring, here's another important thing. Now, shoot, I just messed up. So now I'm going to bring this around and make a, a wide wrap. So you can see how my thread now is farther up the hook shank than it's been. And this will be a little bit easier to show once you've seen it once and we'll use the microfib heads. But so we've got that, that other wrap. And all we're doing is putting a figure eight in. So now we kind of loosen up everything. I gotta see where I'm at now. I'm almost 
slow down. Okay. Bring this up and over. Big wrap. Bring this down and around. So I've got two wraps. So there we go. So we've got our two sets of um, wood duck. So <clears throat> I'm going to bring this so I can cut it off. So I did one wrap completely underneath both of the uh, the fibers here. One wrap there. Then I brought a thread back and came up through to part the fibers and then did another wrap around the shank and then brought the thread back down through the fibers. So there's one wrap underneath and two wraps in between. And that's what's going to make the um, the tails always come apart. Okay. I hope that somewhat made sense. It definitely takes some feel and getting, uh, like I said, having good thread control, but you just kind of have to play with it and see how it works best for you. So now I'm going to kind of work on my taper just a little bit, bring my thread back down to the rear. And we can adjust them a little bit here and there, but that's pretty much what we want right there. What's up, Brandon? <clears throat> you said microfabets. I did say microfabets. Gary, Gary heard it. So that's what, and like I was saying, since Brandon's on here with Moonlit Fly Fishing, once we get to it, once we start using these, um, the Magpie Biots, Wild Turkey Biots, and we're going to use this gray Drake color tonight. Um, if you want to order some of those, use their discount code WF Wednesday for Wood Finish Wednesday, and you get ten percent off. So that's pretty fun. So okay, let's go back over the tying desk. We'll set this up real quick. And I'll probably this is what I said. I've got a bunch of stuff going on tonight, so we're going to do this real quick. Two tricks that I learned. Number one is conditioner. This is just regular old conditioner for your uh, strip peacock quills. If once they're stripped. If you'll just put just a dab of conditioner on here, this makes them really durable, makes them a lot more supple, and makes it where, not that they can't be broken or anything, but it dang helps tremendously. That's a, a trick from Eli Gonzalez. So big thanks to Eli for sharing that one. But we talked about using an eraser last week. So this is a bit time consuming, and I've got a really cool, I wish John Chris was still on here because this is probably his sister's. He would never be walking around with a pink and whatever with cats and dogs, like maybe you would. But I'm just going to grab, you can pull it through. If the tip breaks, it's fine. Pull through, you can see how we already got a bunch of that stripped off. And I'm just gonna do this a couple more times, hopefully. Get this thing stripped. Because usually we use the, um, what were they called? The Polish quails for this process. But sometimes they can be hard to find. They are expensive. And we're just doing something a little bit different this time. Okay, so that is pretty good. I could probably spend a couple more minutes on that and get it really good. But we're going to call that done. So if you saw how I did that, we stripped this peacock quill and it's ready to go. Um, it is past Gary's period at that time, but... With a conditional work on Picari. Um, maybe I don't really have quite the issue with the so this is what I just stripped just now. I don't have quite the issue with Picari stripping as much. Um, <clears throat> but if you'll notice, I'm gonna get the like literally just a teeny bit out. That's all I got right there, which is not much. And we'll find that exact one. And like I said, there might be a a fiber or two that's still on here. So don't get too upset with me. If there is, we could spend more time <clears throat> cleaning it off and get it absolutely perfect. But just trying to go over the, the basics here. So I'm going to dry that off, dry that off, get the conditioner on my fingers. And now we're good. So that's as quick as it takes to do your own peacock quill. Now, if you notice, I'm using primrose thread. And you're like, well, I thought you said they were dark. Well, if you remember, the, the the underside is lighter than the top. And if you remember the picture from Seth, 
His have almost got like a yellow undertone, and ours do too. There's a slight hint of yellow. So I'm going to try to cover up the whole thing with this um, this quill. And um, as it's covered up, the thread will shine through. See, I want you to look what I'm doing here. I'm like literally taking my fingernail and, and pretty hard uh, scraping it down my fingernail. It's not breaking. I wouldn't dare do this with just a Polish quill without putting something on it. Um, so that conditioner works tremendously well to um, strengthen up your quills. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to trim that off, just the tip of it. When you say conditioner, what are you using? Literally, I went up to the kid's bathroom and got hair conditioner. Very good question. Because I, when Seth, or when um, Eli was telling me this trick, I was like, so, like, is there a brand, like, Suave, Head and Shoulders, whatever? It's just regular old hair conditioner. Good question. So I'm going to uncord my thread. I'm going to try to get some of this peacock goodness off of my hands. And I'm going to hold it somewhat at an angle, capture it in pretty close to the, the back. And then I'm going to really start paying attention to my, how my body of my fly, because I don't want it to be, I want there to be a little bit of a taper. Uh, I want to be smooth. But the biggest thing is the what I just said, taper and smooth. That looks pretty good. And now we're good. So, and I'm going to put this in my bobbin cradle like this because I've got the parachute post right there. I don't have to put a half inch or anything on there. Bald and clueless. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big, that's 100% from Eli Gonzalez. Don't. I'm just and and guys, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Most of these tips, every now and then, I get one that is one that's like, oh, that'd be one we're really good. But usually, they're tips I've learned elsewhere. And if I'm if you remotely think I'm trying to claim something as mine, just shoot me. All right, so let's go and wrap this up. If the wraps aren't completely touching, it's not the end of the world. But we want to try to get them as close as we can. And Eli said he would try to make it on tonight live. Um, but stuff comes up. So I'm just going to keep this as close and as smooth and everything as we can. You can see having the rotary like this makes it super easy. I probably could have, not probably, I definitely could have started a little bit further back. So I had to use a little more of the wider part of the of the bio, of the quill, but I'm sorry, that'll just have to do. Okay, I want to do one more quick little trick, <clears throat> and then we'll be done. So normally I would just go ahead and put some put, do my trick and not finish, but because I'm gonna because my trick is my trick. And I'm just kind of weird. I'm going to go ahead and whip finish. So here's my trick. So we always talk about resin and what kind of resin to use. And we're always talking like trying to figure out this or that. And, you know, the reality is not all of us have resin. Yeah, he is tired of Denver show. Not all of us have resin. Resin's expensive. You've got to cure it and, 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 and just... You gotta have a flashlight, resin. So, what else? What do you? What can you use if you don't have resin? Well, number one, you can use nothing. But this is very fragile, even the conditioner. I would not suggest nothing. You know, back when people were wrapping with quills back in the day, um, when Catskill flies were being tied in the original manner, they didn't have resin. So, what did they do? How is it, Jim? Well, is it the same thing, Jimmy? What the same thing you're doing, Jimmy? Um, let me try. Um. So what do they do? They would sometimes use wire, real thin wire to counter wrap to, to give the, the fly some more durability, but they would also use head cement. And what kind of head cement do we use around here? We use Sally Hansen. So that's what we use. Um, Sally Hansen's, I've got three, I'm, I'm like, 
I might have a problem because I've got three bottles. Oh, where my other bottle is. Oh, we when we travel, got this bottle here. So I've got three different bottles. They're actually three different viscosities. And once one starts thickening up, if you'll just put a little regular rubbing alcohol in it, you will get it just right. So this is my thin stuff here. And all I'm going to do is take it out of the, take it out, put my glasses back on. What's up on stream assassins? Thank you so much for joining us. Long time. I think you were time live the other night with some, uh, with the club. And we're just going to hit this with some Sally Hansen's. It's going to be nice and thin. It's going to soak into that body real good. Now, the, the thing with Sally Hansen's is it, it works fine. But when you're used to working with um, resin, and you're like, well, just move it around, do this, do that, we're done. You want to, like, do your thing. Oh, my gosh, Gary, I finally see it. I know what you're talking about. I can't believe you've been letting me tie this long with that. Darn what was thing. he talking about? You don't see it on there? Oh my gosh, Katie. Oh, you mean I, the feather that's askew? Well, I can't see it except for on the TV, well, on I'm the TV it, channel. I'm fix it, fixated on the upper left corner of the screen where there's a speck of dust that I missed when I was cleaning my lens. <laughs> All I right, wonder so if they can see it. It's like a tiny black little thing. I have, to have my glass in the shower. So you want to condition your shampoo? Yeah. So John Collins, you're right. You're absolutely right. They, they used varnish back then. Um, and when I said, I should have said varnish, um, but, um, but the varnish head cement, my point is we've all got some kind of head cement. We, we use Sally Hansen's, but um, you uh, use that. And that's, that's totally fine. I'm going to take this. And I'm going to set this right in this cup. Because I, I, before you mess with it, you do want to let it dry. So we'll come back to this fly. All right, so let's start another one. This one's going to be a lot quicker. Oh, I can't unsee it. Finally, the fire will dry me. <laughs> it causes so many refuse. Well, dude, I, I couldn't even, I didn't see it until I looked up on the, t on the TV. Those egg-shaped blowers are dust off. Oh, I, I do. You do? Do you want to see what Katie got? I have all that stuff. It's just um, it's just difficult to get, get it all. I, I probably blew a piece of dust on there. So this is going to be the quicker version. And we'll do the, just for time constraints, we're going to do the body twice. Um, but I'm going to use the microfibets on this one. And... Is there a joke somewhere? You want to talk about microfibets? Brush it off this whole time. Yeah, and once you get it on there, now if you're if your Sally Hansen's is too thick, you like it'll be too much. But if it's not, like thin it out, make it really thin. Put two coats on if you want to, and it's fine. All right, so I just pulled I just pulled two mayfly tails out. And this is fine. You like use paint brushes. You, there's lots of different hacks or whatever people, different substitutions. I'm going to line up the tips here. Okay. And these aren't absolutely perfectly lined up, but they'll be good enough for now. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to measure out. So it's, um, it needs to be a little bit longer than that. But so it's, um, yeah, that's about, about the length I want my tail to be. So the hook, the entire length of the hook plus uh, a gap or so. So I'm going to do the same thing. And this is easier to tie with, but man, your mistakes are amplified with, with this. So I'm going to take them, lift them up, do a wrap underneath. Bring that around. So you see how it propped it up, kind of splayed it out a little bit. I'm going to do a one wrap this way. I'm going, this is like I'll try to split them just a little bit so I can get my thread in between this wrap. So I go in between it, do a full wrap. So I've got my thread kind of further up. And now I'm going to, with, loose, with a loose wrap, see I've got my, see how it's loose right here? 
And now I can tighten up, do some adjusting. And now I've got my, th my little bit of adjustment to go. I've got my um, <clears throat> tail split. As you can just bend them up. Yep. You can definitely do that for sure. So this is where I'm going to unfortunately really start speeding up because I'm going to try to finish these two flies. So the trick with the, where'd it go? So I got a wild turkey biot. I want a long one because this is a long fly. Well, comparatively. So I'm going to pull one off. Strip it off. Oh, get off of there. Maybe. It make it's a little bit more difficult because I'm pulling it from the middle. I should have just cut it too. So I've got my my wild biot here. Split and lift off. Split and lift drop a UV. Yep, that'll that'll do. Um so let's go over to the hook. See how wide this is. If that was my um the edge here is going to be our trailing edge, and this one covers everything up. So if that's as wide as my thing would be, that was going to be a little bit chunky. So all I'm going to do is take my long scissors, hold my breath, and just cut just a little bit of it off. And... Build a little bit of a taper because this is not going to taper itself. And I'll need that for the next step. Tie this in like that. I'm going to undo this one once I've got it done because we're going to use a different material. Bring this over. Find my hack of pliers. Well, hopefully this will still work. There we go. I don't want it to twist around on me yet. Okay, so you can see how, see the um, ridge this raised up? that right there there you can see it see that ridge is raised up i'm gonna cover it up with my wrap cover it up my wrap cover it up cover cover i missed one little spot but i can go back and get that but i'm not super worried right now okay <clears throat> so Roughly, real quick, that's the way that do, that that does it. So, Chris, what are you doing wrong? This don't count the that's John. No, you're right. They don't. keeps wiping the screen. Oh. Uh, so, um, so that's the way we would do the the buy up. But we're gonna because Big T made a mention of the the other. So the one that we posted today that was in the front, like the group of flies, that's what we did. That we we use the, the turkey biot for the body. Um, but we're going to use the semper fly perfect quills and medium for for this one. So for those of you who don't know, this is synthetic quill. This is super easy. It's almost like cheating. Pull it off, grab it by the, the end. One side's sticky, one side's not the way I wrap. I like for the sticky side to go ahead and stick onto the body. Now I'm going to bring this up with touching wraps. I don't want my tag in here to start wrapping around the, um, you can stick it down right there. It's not like sticky that it's going to like hold really well. Um, it's more, the stickiness is more just all to the sheet. Um, so we're going to, Encore my thread. You notice I changed my color of thread from the primrose 
to this nice brown. I just feel like it matched what I was going for a little bit better. So now I'm going to build a little bit of taper because there's zero taper taper in the um, synthetic wheels. And this is just building it up, going a third of the way down, going half the way down. I will spin my thread. So all I'm doing right now is easier than worrying about which side you tie down. Yep. Both ways will definitely work for fishing purposes. All right. So we got that tied in nicely. We're going to thread. And remember, the remember this is not a caddis. This is not a big, huge, chunky. This is a big fly comparatively, but it's not a big, chunky, giant fly. So we're going to take our um, peacock or peacock wheel, our synthetic wheel. You can be much more robust with this. Someone said something about just put a drop of UV on the tails. That's exactly what we're going to do in just a second. So all I'm doing is making touching wraps. I don't. I'm I'm stretching this, but not like a crazy amount. We'll call it good right there. And we'll bring this up so it's at least in front of where the post is going to go. Cut that off. Okay. So now here, here's really where if you wanted it to get, I don't know what the word is fancy with it <clears throat> make your tails just perfect see how i've got a nice taper in here you can see that little bit of segmentation that's perfect now we're going to do those y'all that love the resin we're going to a little just just a little bit of the this is the gulf thin man right here because what, what i want to do and you see when that resin gets on there it's like bam a bam, right, honey? That's right. I feel like Emerald Lagasse. I'm like, bam. That might scare someone. I don't know what. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Willis? So all I'm doing right now, because I didn't put too much on, I barely got enough. Just kind of evening this out. And... How's that looking? Pretty good. I think that'll work for for now. Find my EV torch, hit it. Now you can really see that segmentation of the UV on there. That's just brown thread, the same 12 watt classic wax thread, the synthetic quill. Now I'm sure uh, Moonlit Fly Fishing has the synthetic quills. GB Flies, Gary Barnes got them. Um, why one of the first slide do you? Post first, the second one you don't. Yep, I'm gonna show that second way. Could you split the tails with the tag in? Yes, way that that's a good that's a another way to do it. Um, and what Wade is talking about, what I like to do, Wade, that's an awesome question. I don't know if I've seen you ask anything on here, you ought to ask more questions. So, what he's talking about is just when you start your thread, leave your tag in and do well, do whatever, put tie your, your um, um, tails in, then do it. But what I've seen. And what I've done as well is once I've got my tails tied in, I'll just grab a piece of thread like this, bring them up together like this, see, and bring it up and then use that, like tie this in. Obviously, before we do our body and everything, but you tie that in and this thread in between is going to keep the thread, keep the uh, tail split. It's another really good way to do it. Um. <clears throat> I mean, there's a bunch of questions on there, and I forgot I, I wasn't looking up. Um, now, the the perfect quills work good for small for bigger flies. Uh, I think they're they're great for that. Let's make sure I'm good and cooked. 
So one of y'all asked, and I'm sorry, Joe asked, why don't you do the post first on one of them and second on this? So because when I tied in the post in the manner that I did, I had to kind of put some of the posts underneath the body. So I had to work on my taper with the post. In this case, let's switch over to tying desk. Please, Katie. Where did you say? Let me switch over to time desk, please. Oh. Um, so I've got my, my uh, this is a separate fly poly yarn, and this is in blue done or iron done. This is the iron, iron blue, sorry, iron blue um, poly yarn. So I'm going to take my uh, post material. Put it just like this and hold hold it like that with my thread. See that that part's at the very top of your screen. I will switch over to the hook. I'm gonna grab it, bring it around, and put the post right where I want it. Okay, that's where I want it. I'll let go. So this whole process, I want to keep my uh, I want to keep my thread really tight. So I'm gonna go one, two. So there's a total of three wraps there. One, two, three wraps here. And I'm going to pull this up and get three right here. Two, three. And now I'm going to wrap it around the bottom. Okay, so we did a series of three wraps. Now my post is locked in. It's not going anywhere. So now I've got my post right where I want it. It can go right right there, no problem. I don't. I can tie that in first or second. It doesn't matter what order I tie my posts in when I tie it in like this. But if I'm tying in a material that I have to dam up and uh, and make the taper on the hook shank, I need to. I personally like to tie it in first before the uh, the tails. This is just this is the quick and easy way to do this. And once we get this part to the final stage, it's about good. Let's see, we'll make a couple more. Now I'll work a thread back down. That's a little bit more hackle than I wanted, but it's okay. Now this technique, as far as using the parachute post, I'm gonna cut that there. I'm gonna look and see I've got this much. Can you see that a little bit? I've got that much waste so far. So really using this technique, the only waste is going to be this little bit that I cut off the top. So let's grab a hackle. And I was going to use different colors of hackles, but I want to get this kind of going. This is a Whiting Farms uh, Hebert Miner uh, medium gray done. For these particular ones, I like shoot, um, medium to dark done. I also have this Collins Rusty done that, that was a nice color as well. Uh, I did one with the medium done, and it wasn't quite dark enough, but whatever works good for you. So I'm going to take my hackle, strip this off. Just getting something to tile, a little bare stem here. I'll switch back over to the post itself. I'm going to hold this at an angle, capture it with one. So I got my thread on this side of the, the post. I'm just going to capture it in with one, with one wrap, pull up until it's the right length. So you can see I've got bare stem on top, on the very top. Now I'll just go that same posting method, working my way up. Just kind of stacking those wraps on there one at a time. There we go. Going down, you can get a little bit more space. Now you can see my little tag right there. I'm just going to capture it in with my thread. And I've got that done. 50 shades of gray, that's right. So let's mix up some dubbing real quick. <clears throat> and I'm going to use this beaver and muskrat. So this is a gray and kind of a brownish, reddish color. I'm going to mix up these two. I will just pull it out. Now, if you're going to tie a whole bunch of these, I'd try to mix up more than 
what I'm going to do here, but <clears throat> try to get the right shade that you want. Because this, you can choose to leave all these long fibers in, but I go ahead and try to pull them out. So I've got a few different colors here. All I want to do is mix them up. Just kind of carding them, stretching them out. Now we're going to dub this up. Now we don't want it super thin, don't want it super thick, just kind of a regular, regular noodle. Maybe one more little piece. Don't you pull the dubbing out of the holes in the top box that I said last week? Because this, uh, I don't have much dubbing in these. And when I do that, I end up using tweezers and I start pulling this. I've only got like 500 different kinds of dubbing. And for some reason, the past couple weeks, I've been using the same natural dubbing. Um, and <clears throat> I, um, I need to get some more packages. So once the, those boxes are good, but once you start running low, then... Um, you need to go ahead and either get some more or you kind of have to be careful how you pull it out. So I've got that wrapped on there and I'm going to do one wrap here. So okay, we switch back. Actually, you can leave it, leave it on that. So you see, I've got our, our thorax body all done. Now the reason I told Katie to leave it on the other side is now I took this out of my vice. And see, you can't really see, but you can see right here. This is a better angle for this. I'm going to just take my, my hackle and wrap it around. Do need to tighten this up so I'm not. Yep. Staring down at a big bright light when you're doing this. It's not what I normally do. Okay, so once you get started, it's usually pretty easy. The reason that I like to move my, and I've been moving my fly like this for quite a while, is I'm, I'm able to do wrap straight up and straight down much easier. Now I take my feather, hold it out like this, pull it down, take my thread. I'm going to do two wraps underneath everything, underneath everything, underneath there. Now we should be able to switch over to the hook. So you can see I've got this, got that wrapped in there. I've got the um, the hackle feather there. Trim that out. And I'm gonna put one more wrap right there and pull tight. So you can see I've got it nice and tight. And I'm gonna try with the angle going this way. So you can see, I'm gonna try to whip finish right here. Might be kind of tricky. I think I can do it. Put four turns in there. We'll trim it. And I will move it back up here. So there's our <clears throat> there's our done synthetic one that will cut this um cut the parachute off just a smidge kind of like that so that is our quick one i probably clean it up just a little bit and i will take my sally hansons again is the heckle larger than the hook gap the heckle is definitely larger than the hook gap itself um typically i want the heckle to go to the um the back to right here so you can see to, to the back of the body. You can see I'm just a shade on the long side. And with these March Browns, I like having, having them just a little bit bigger. Um, when you say the, the hook gap itself, this is what I think you're referring to is this distance. So the hackle is definitely that. As far as this is a size 12 hook um, on the hackle gauge, this is right in the middle of a size 12 hackle. So that's kind of what I, what I did. So I'd probably get a pair of tweezers or cut this this one fiber out here and clean it up a bit. But all I'm going to do is take some Sally Hansen's out of the bottle here. We'll hold it out. 
put a good drop in right there. And you can see that'll soak in and that will disappear. And that's going to glue up that knot and make it good to go. Lots of people like one size larger. Yep. Great show tonight. I need to run. Okay, Gary, thanks for hopping. Thanks for everything. That's a very good Thank you, Steve. Um, so this one's going to be the natural. We'll get this next one done. And it's basically going to be the same uh, same process. Like I said, I was going to use a different hackle for this one, but I'm going to go through and sort one. I'm just cut it, ripping off a little bit. Um, it's tripping that same feather that I just cut off. I'm going to hold, shoot, I need to put thread on there. <coughs> Cut that off. So never you want to know. <laughs> yes, you do. Joe, did I answer your question? I hope I really hope so. Um, so we'll hold this, capture it one wrap, pull it up so you can see that stem is uh, above the parachute. Now we're gonna one trick is to make sure your thread's flat. If you've got really corded up thread, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. Um so I'm just, see how stiff that post is? I mean, there's no glue or well, there's glue on the body itself, but I'm using glue to stiffen up anything. It's got a little bit of a tag in there. Capture that. And I'm going to use a little bit of dubbing that left. Hopefully I've got enough. I don't know if I will or not. Yeah, I'd say so. So, guys, make sure you uh, comment on this video after, please, after uh, the video's done. Um, and when you tie, if you tie up one of these variations or your own variation of a Quill Gordon parachute style, um, use hashtag Whip Finish Wednesday so we can share it and see it. Um, what else? I'm missing my post is a little bit further back than it was on the uh, last one. That's okay. You can see I've got all this goody goodness in here. Probably trim some of it, but we'll see. I think it looks pretty good. A little bit of bugginess. Love that, love that version. Great stuff. Is anyone on here fishing or the driftless as well? See, Freddie, thanks so much. So just so you can see it, I'm going to wrap this. Um, oh, hell. And we'll wrap it the opposite way. And we'll wrap this without turning it. Maybe it'll turn out okay. I say maybe because I just haven't wrapped this way in so long. Yeah, guys, if you all are in the Driftless area, holler away because um, it's super cool for you all to go fishing with some buddies. Okay, now I've got to, you know what, that gum it. I'm going to have to trap it again this way. So I totally did that one backwards. So there's our kind of bad. So the only thing I do now, other than straighten this up really good, <clears throat> is I'm going to take a black marker because, or a black, a brown marker to do my whip finish. And then we'll be done. I'm going to do the same thing. We'll put a little drop of going under everything, but over the hook. Under, over, under, over. I'll do one more. Pull it nice and tight. Give it a little shot ahead of cement. 
right in there. And there we go. So I'm sorry. Sometimes you need to do what the feather wants. That's right. So I wrapped it backwards. But unfortunately, Chris, my thread was uh, going the wrong way. So I kind of had to counter wrap my hackle, but that's okay. Let's say LOL. Iowa. It was a hidden gem. Um, so if I got, got rid of some of this hair right there, I think it'll look a little bit better. And so there we go. Yep. So a quick little um, couple flies. Actually, those are probably a lot longer, a lot longer than we had anticipated. Feather to be brushed out of the way and not trapped. Yep, I agree. Um, so uh, guys, thank you so much. We uh, we had a fun night. Sorry, it went a little bit long tonight. Um, but make sure use your uh, if you whatever variation of a of a quill Gordon parachute. Use hashtag what finished Wednesday. We'll share it next week. That'll get you to in, enter to win the prize pack from Gary Barnes Flies from or GB Flies. Thanks, Gary. Some Smitty's Fly Box for that partridge skin, full partridge skin from them. Thank you so much, Smitty's Fly Box. Two bags of coffee and a cup from Angler's Coffee. So big thanks to Joe at Angler's Coffee. And um, uh, the fly box from Umqua and the flies, the flies we tied tonight. So, um, yeah. So guys also uh, comment on the, uh, the video. And if you all have not subscribed to our channel, if you made it this long and you have not subscribed to the channel, we'd really appreciate you subscribing, um, liking the video, give it a thumbs up after it's posted. And, um, we look forward to seeing you guys next week. As always, it's been a fun night. We, uh, we always enjoy these evenings drinking out of our Yetis. Oh, if you see that. Yep, our Yeti. And um, having a good time. So, anything else to bring? <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks, Wade. I'm glad you got to hop on and, and chat with us for a little while. And Joe, thank you. And I saw your comment yesterday. I'm glad you hopped on super early. Michael, it's awesome. Always great to. I'm glad you got rid of the band cold 2023. Sorry, I sent it over to the side of the country to you. Mark, thanks so much. I will turn it over to Katie. Let her say goodbye. And guys, thank you very much for all your support. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night. Have fun flying. Fly fishing. Have fun time flies. Bye. See you guys. Everyone on Instagram, thank you so much.